the story of the death of Mani I. Bahram I and Mani. Mani came to the audience of Bahram I, after the king had summoned me, Nuzadag the interpreter, and Kushtai the scribe, and Abzakhiah the Persian. The king was at the dinner table and had not yet washed his hands nor finished his meal. The courtiers entered and said, Mani has come and is standing at the door. The king sent the lord the message, wait a while until I can come to you myself. Then the lord again sat down to one side of the guard and waited there until the king had finished his meal, when he was to have gone hunting. The king stood up after his meal. After putting one arm around the queen of the Sakers and the other around Kada, son of Ardavan, he came to the lord. His first words to the lord were, you are not welcome here. Why? What wrong have I done, replied the lord. I have sworn an oath not to let you come to this land. And then he angrily told the Lord, What good are you? You don't fight or go hunting. Perhaps you are needed for doctoring and healing, but you don't even do that. Then the Lord told him, I have done you no evil. I have always done good in tending you and your family. And I have freed a multitude of your servants from demons and witches and I caused many to rise from their sicknesses. I have held down the fever of many, and many who died I brought back to life. Mani's spiritual voyage to the Father in the sky. Like a sovereign who removes and lays his weapons aside and also his clothes and puts on another royal garment, so the messenger of light laid aside the warlike dress of the body and took his seat in a ship of light where he received the divine garment, the diadem of light, and the beautiful garland. Then in great joy he flew with the light gods who were on his right and on his left, with the music of the harp and songs of happiness. He flew because of holy miraculous power like swift lightning and a star darting to the column of glory, the path of the light, and the moon chariot five where the gods meet. And there he remained with God, Oamized the Father. Yet below him, Mani had left the whole flock of the just orphaned and sad. Prayer to Oamized The ever-powerful one stood in prayer, imploring the Father with praise, I have cleaned the earth and spread the seed and the fruit full of life I have brought you. I have built a palace and a quiet monastery for your spirit. And the Holy Spirit I sowed in a green flower garden and brought you a delightful garland. Brilliant trees I made fruitful and showed the road leading to the suns high in the air. I entirely fulfilled your holy commands. The moon and sun are ships of light to transport the light to the realm above. On riding the moon, the moon is a ship of light. Manichaean literature. And for them I was sent into the world. Take me now into the peace of salvation where I will no longer glance at the figures of enemies nor hear the voice of tyrants. For the time of this birth, unlike my earlier ones, affords me the garland of victory. The earth trembles as he enters Nirvana. On the fourth of the month of Sharava, on Monday at the eleventh hour, when he had prayed, Mani shed the wonted garment of the body. Like the swift lightning he gleamed brighter than the light of the sun, the chariot glittered, and the messengers spoke and greeted the just God. The sides of the house of the sky broke. The earth trembled. A mighty voice was heard, and people who saw this sign were confused and fell on their faces. It was a day of pain and a time of sorrow when the messenger of light entered death, when he entered the complete nirvana. Commands from the Chariot of Water he left behind the leaders guarding the church. Mani the noble prince has fulfilled his promise, telling us. For you I shall wait above in the chariot of water, on the moon, my resting place until the world is saved, and always send down help to you. Whoever strikes you, do not strike back. Whoever hates you, do not hate back. Whoever envies you, do not envy again. 
Whoever strikes you with anger, always return him kindness, and what you deplore in others do not yourself do. No, you must endure insults and abuses from those of higher station, from equals and those below, because you who are devout and endure will not waver. If someone throws flowers against an elephant, these flowers cannot smash an elephant. If raindrops fall on a stone, these raindrops cannot melt the stone. So insults and abuses can in no way make the devout and of good endurance waver.